What do you got now, Pat? Nothing. I got a little white bar at the bottom, and that's it. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's not going to work. That's weird. Normally, when I've done this, I've been able to just. Uh... Okay. Well, that's one little piece I was going to do and show, but that won't work. That's okay. I still think you can probably go back into the screen share and flip from one program to another if you want. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's weird. Well, let me look and see what it did there. Boom. Okay. There it is. How about now? Yeah, I got a, yes, I'm now seeing a folder with some things. Now I'm seeing the, what questions, comments do you have? Okay, now I got it. All right, cool. I'll just have to do kind of a quick stop share and then share. All right, I got it. And I'll keep an eye on the chat box and uh, as questions come through, it, you ask at some point, I will let you know what we got. Okay, sounds good. Now that's not in presentation mode. I know. Okay, just letting you know. President Kevin. Mike Woody <clears throat> oversees tennis operations for seven Genesis health clubs and trains and uh, oversees over 30 tennis pros who work on 48 indoor tennis courts. Before Genesis, his Genesis health uh, position, he was the executive director of the Greater Midland Tennis Center for over 22 years, which has 39 which is a 39 tennis court complex. He's uh, run numerous large scale events. He's presented uh, nationally many, many times and is the, an award winner of just several awards. Um, let's see, National USPTA Facility Manager of the Year, Community Service Award winner. He's also a USTA Master Trainer and he's just an overall terrific uh, presenter. I give you Mike Woody. Good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, great to be here. And uh, um, I, I'm going to challenge everybody, including myself, in that the topic is one that I think over the years I often asked myself, how come one time something worked and the next time it didn't? But I, and it came out of the fact that I did the same recipe, but it was really how I did it that, that changed. So one day I failed, the next time it was better. So, um, so that's what this presentation comes out of. Um, I think you'll find some good thought starters and uh, there'll be a little bit of dialogue through it. But to start things off, as, as we always do, we gotta have a good warm up. So I'm gonna do a quick screen share here and um, I'm gonna move to this screen right here. If you've ever used, if you have not used Mentimeter, this is kind of a neat tool for, um, to use in presentations or to get things going with your team. So what I'd like everyone to do is on their phone, go to menti.com and use the code uh, 77522. And there'll be a question there. Oops, I'm sorry, that's not the one I wanted either, by the way, so don't go to that one because I don't have questions there for you. Sorry, this is the one I wanted you to ask. So this is gonna be, let me hit that back again. So it's gonna be um, this one. Who am I? Which box do you hit? So are you a constant learner? Always looking to seek and better yourself? Are you operating at status quo? Or are you just a sluggard? So if you can participate there, if you have any questions, you can ask or unmute yourself. We got one constant learner, that's good. We got two. Give this a few. It's kind of a neat little tool, good visual learner, uh, visual 
Oh, we got one sluggard. Okay. There's always one in a group. I'm assuming because we're here on a, a Saturday afternoon, we're probably some form of constant learners. I'll let a few more get here, but I think you all get the general premise. But the idea here is again, which, which box are you? Where are you at? And again, this, this tool, you could ask a lot of different questions, but it gives everybody an idea where they, where they sit within the group. So I've got one more warm up here and I'm just going to go back for a second and my next one here is just to kind of get us warmed up. So again, we'll go to the next question is this is rank order. So what are the keys to be uh, keys to success as a tennis pro in rank order? I mean, is if you think one is being a good tennis player and you just rank them one through four. No right or wrong, it's just your own opinion. But what do you think it takes to be a tennis professional? We're gonna say teaching tennis professional. So not a playing tennis professional. So if you wanna hit the, again, go to menti.com, okay. So far two responses down in the right hand corner, I can see you've got about four. So the key successes, constant improvement, core essentials, being good at networking and schmoozing, being a really good tennis player. We'll wait till there's eh, maybe 25 or 30 on there. Again, this menti.com is again, another way of just engaging your staff. Um, there's no right or wrong. People don't have to feel vulnerable if they're answering and and people are making, uh, giving impressions. The idea of this tool is just to create an atmosphere of where are we at? Where's the group at? So again, I have 22, 23 people. We rank constant improvement as number one, having the core essentials, being good at networking and schmoozing and coming forth as a good tennis player. So good, I'm gonna pop out of this and I'm gonna come back to that was just a warm up to get us going and we're going to get at the heart of today's topic Oops. and you should have my screen again pat do you have my screen with yes your warm up screen is now showing again okay good all right so again today the idea of of the presentation again is it's not i believe it's not what you do that makes a great product program event lesson it's how you do it so today we you know we already started with you know we're continual learners we know that we want to keep getting better so i'm going to challenge each of us to think today in that what i'm going to share is just some ideas some thought starters uh some are some things these aren't uh, conceptual ideas for me these will be you'll you'll see some pictures these are things i've played with and really kind of uh, well over the where am i at here almost 36 years of teaching is just experiments and, and how to better myself so in in what we do think of it this way it's the ingredients you need it's the essential components it's the plan it's it's like the list of what what's needed it gets us in the game so examples for a tennis lesson might be if we were saying, if we we're going to give this to a new coach, what are the things that are core to giving a good tennis lesson? So I started with get there early, have tennis balls on the court. So I'm going to switch us again and, and kind of engage us here, the 104 of us that are in our uh, Zoom here. And what I'd like you to do is now the question I have is, so what makes up? What is it that makes up a good lesson? So again, it's more those higher level, the, the, the what's. Again, these are the, the core things that get you in the game. So if you could answer that, this is gonna be a little different format. It's just gonna, um, you can be a little bit wordy, don't get too wordy. Um, but again, you're gonna get a Mentimeter Sorry to make you all work, but uh, actually I'm not sorry. 
Saturday afternoon. It's time to work. So if you can enter this, you should see that on the screen. It's Mentimeter. Oops, sorry guys. I didn't do the presents. There we go. High level of engagement with the student. Okay, good. That's a what. So you gotta, you gotta ask questions. You gotta listen um, to why the student's taking the lesson, planning ahead, gotta have a lesson plan. Got to figure out ways to connect with the person. We're going to spend some time on that. Connecting with the person, I think, is a little bit more of the how. Um, focused improvement, single strokes, tactics, so you have a lesson plan. Of course, it needs to show improvement. How you do that is important. Positive energy, I think that's a what. That's a good what. We're going to talk about the how. How do you create that positive energy, and how do you uh, magnify that? How do you get student, the what is getting your students focused? Today we'll talk a little bit how and give you some, some thoughts to starters there. Gotta observe. Um, have person have fun and one per, have person have fun and 1% better. Everybody gets a little bit better. There's homework afterwards. You're gonna steal, somebody just stole one of my hows, giving them something extra to do. Understanding your current, students needs. So a neat thing here is when I get done with this presentation, if any of you have added more to this, I'm going to send you this list. But again, these are all the things I think we would all agree that make up a good lesson. Okay, now we're going to get into the how. And I'm going to move here. Okay. So with that, we'll get into the how. So how do we do it? And we just talked about really the what, it's the high level, but I believe that it's how we do it that sets us apart. It's how we mix the ingredients. It's how we execute, it's the magic. It's the personal and creative and memorable touches we add. It's what differentiates us and what sets us apart. So that's kind of the journey we're gonna go on here. So. I call it, it's really, it's all about how we cupcake, okay? So right, here's our first cupcake. It's, it's a basic tennis lesson, it's vanilla. It gets us in the game, it's enjoyable. And what do we do? We add some sprinkles to it, right? So maybe we add an atmosphere of music to the lesson, or maybe we roll out a little bit of, uh, um, Maybe there's a icebreaker we do or something special. So we just put a little bit of sprinkles on that uh, vanilla um, cupcake. All right, that's pretty good, but how do you go to the next level? Well, maybe we got to add a few other features to it. Not only um, do we have the music going, but maybe what we do is we offer some video in the lesson or Maybe we're writing down an assessment as we go. So we've added a few more little extras. So again, we go from just a basic get in the game vanilla cupcake to something that's a little more snazzy. Now you go a little more creative. You're getting a little more out there. It's a little different. And people are noticing that your lessons are different. More people, want their, more people want those lessons, more people are willing to travel because you're providing something that's extra. And we'll talk a little bit of that. So at the end of the day, if you continue to better your vanilla cupcake, what you end up with is an amazing display of what you do. So we move from just what is just the ingredients to the how and you have, um, a fancier product, something that's more tellable, showable, and um, memorable. A basic cupcake turns into a exquisite um, experience. And it would be how we present that cupcake and, 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 and how it relates to our teaching and our tennis. So with that today, I'm gonna ask that, you're gonna have to be a little crafty like the mouse. You're gonna have to, outthink the trap. You're going to have to be mighty and strong. You're going to have to think a little bit. The guy in the left-hand corner, you know, that's, uh, you know, that's a hip 
Um, I call it a street smart Albert Einstein. You got to be flexible and you'll have to be loud. So I'm going to give you some thought starters here. I'm going to talk through some of those things. And um, Pat, if there's some questions that come up that are engaging that you want, somebody's asking along the way, feel free to jump in there and uh, buckle your seatbelts and here we go. So this is a what. And, and the what is, it's a jelly bean dispenser with a tennis racket on it. But how we present the jelly bean dispenser, it's an engagement tool for our front desk. And the idea there was we had members who weren't stopping at our front desk. So our how was to create a center of um, connection and a center of um, a place where conversations happened. Of course, we couldn't do the jelly bean dispenser right now, but what we could do or what we did do with this is the idea was to make it special. You had a bad day on the tennis court. How we use this was take two poles and, and grab yourself a couple jelly beans. You need a little more power in your match today. Pull the, pull the racket down and you get your super power pills. In fact, Steve Asher one day pulled the handle down and he pulled down five grape jelly beans at the same time. And we wrote about it in our newsletter. So the how was how do we sensationalize things? How do we make our club fun? How do we make the culture different? So the jelly bean dispenser, which was just a innocent ploy to get people to the front desk, turned out to be around a $1,500 to later on a $2,000 a year jelly bean expense. And I made sure at this time it was a board I was working for that uh, I hid that we were spending $2,000 in jelly beans, but it was part of our mantra as part of our culture. The next was you got a crappy, you know, again, how do you change the physical area around you? And again, this is a picture a few years back, but we had a crappy uh, parking lot. So I decided let's park, let's paint these parking spots because people are complaining about the parking lot. So let's make it a, a motif for famous tennis players. And so we'd ask people, you know, what parking spot did you park in today? And there was Andre Agassi and there was Chris Severett. And then there was John McEnroe. Of course, if you parked in McEnroe's spot, we just asked that you kept your racket in your hands and no tenter tank temper tantrums. So we had some fun with it. So I, the idea of the how is to create a story. So sometimes you have to be a little different. You have to provide the how is, how do you get a little more attention? How do you create more fun? And how do you make it special? So sometimes you have to go out on a limb and we'll talk a little bit about what it takes to deliver a creative how, but sometimes you got to be different. And the reason I share these pictures is um, I think it's part of the story and it's to know these things do work. Um, they do grow tennis and they create an atmosphere of, of fun, creates an atmosphere of family, and it creates an atmosphere of enjoyment. So the what we need to do is we need to promote tennis. In fact, we need to get fitness people to love tennis. So how we did it is we brought the big tennis racket around and we engaged people playing tennis in the gym with a huge tennis racket. Of course, people wanted to take photos. They wanted to um, put those on their Facebook pages and things like that. And that's how we grew our grassroots tennis. We went to the gym side, brought the big racket, and we promoted and we played tennis with them with the big rackets. So again, as you're seeing this, the idea is, well, what could I do? If I'm having trouble growing tennis, you might be doing the right what, but it's how you're doing it that's not making it happen. Um, we wanted to launch cardio tennis. So how we did it is we did a special invite, VIPs only. So only these ladies, and there's a guy there too, could come out and experience cardio tennis for the first time. 
that created some buzz. And many of the people in these pictures are still in our cardio tennis program. But that was a VIP approach on how we engaged our members in, into a brand new program. Do you have to do it for cardio tennis? No, you could do it for a lot of other programs too. Um, how we grew tennis and how we got tennis um, exciting within our clubs is we involved everybody, okay? We involved housekeeping, front desk, our snack bar, our nursery. This happened to be our personal trainers behind us who always joke that we were the tennis pros and we brought them out on the court for a cardio tennis experience and they had an absolute blast. And as you notice the picture, I hate still pictures because I think they don't bring anything to life. So one of the things, one of our houses, how we, how we showcase what just happened is we try to have pictures with a lot of activity. But it was amazing how we brought this experience to these personal trainers in this particular club where we were showcasing this and the trainers that were there, tennis went through the roof. We saw more people from the fitness side come to tennis. And we made a big deal and we had fun. How we engage our members, we sometimes come up with themes. And for me, it's been a 10 year process of, hey mom, I'm getting skinny doing cardio tennis. And uh, we have some fun with that. So sometimes you have to be the, um, the poster person for the initiatives that you're running and you're doing. So this was the, hey, I'm getting skinnier initiative and we had a great time with it. So here's a big how, and I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna flip a little bit here and, and show you a video. But I wanted to show you, this was a cardio tent, actually this was a Get Fit Wichita tennis experience. And this came out of the idea that we needed to, prov well actually the uh, exercise group, the fitness group in Wichita asked us as tennis coaches, hey, would you guys like to do our Get Fit Wichita? And I said, sure. What I didn't ask was how many people are gonna attend this thing? And they said there'd be around 170 people who generally come out. And I'm thinking, all right, how am I gonna do 170 people when I only have eight indoor courts? So we came up with this idea of doing cardio tennis group X and it's doing 36 foot tennis on a tennis court with a mix of existing tennis players who wanted to get some fitness and brand new people. How could we create an atmosphere where everybody could engage and have fun? So I'm gonna show you this and um, what this looks like. It's just a one minute video. But again, the idea, what I want you to think about is how we did it. How did we make this, this what was just supposed to be a tennis fitness experience, how did we pull it off? And, and, and what are the things that occurred and, and how we delivered it. So uh, hang tight here as I share. Um, hoping this is it. Pat, you may have to help me here. I don't know if this, do you have a video that's showing up? Still seeing your presentation screen. Ah, uh, okay, that's because I didn't have shit. While you're working on that, uh, Corey says that he took his first lesson on those courts with Pushki, Pushk, Pushy K. Yeah, Myron Pushki. Yeah, Push okay. it. And uh, that's pretty cool. Well, that's the, you know, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do this. I got to, let me, give me one sec, because I think it's worth seeing. So right now, what can you see? The Minty, um, what yeah. makes up a good lesson? All right, so somehow I've got to get to this video. So let me just do it one more time. I think it's worth, uh, uh, let's see here. Oh, there it is, okay, good. All right, 
All right, should be able to see a video now or a, a Genesis screen? Yes. Okay, here we go. So these are many beginners. We put them all in different colored t-shirts, right? We used a red ball, a 23 inch racket. The tennis players in the black shirts are Wichita State college players. We had heart rate monitors, which created an interesting challenge because we only had a hundred of them. You can see the atmosphere, people moving, passing the ball back and forth, a bit of chaos, a lot of smiles you can't see, high fives galore, a lot of movement. Again, the things that we don't realize is the, the fitness element of tennis. So again, the, the how of this was, was critical. How we celebrated, how we made a big deal of it. And then again, at the very end, our, our shot was how much fun we had with it. The interesting thing in this was the average calories that were burned were around 690 calories in an hour and 10 minutes. So the average burn, and we had some college guys there, very experienced players. All we asked them to do is keep their feet moving, and they played with different level of players. Um, a couple of the guys on the team burned 900 calories, and they had a blast. And they kind of came in with a little bit of a, I'm not going to say a chip on their shoulder, but they're like, ah, this is going to be a little bit of BS. And they ended up having fun, and it was a great experience for everybody. So. The reason I shared this again is to get the mind thinking, how can I make things better? If you run an event, if you're just running uh, your things at a vanilla ice or vanilla cupcake, you know, and now you're adding a few sprinkles, how do you keep bettering that? And again, this is, you know, each time I've got to try to figure out how do I better what we're doing because these people get used to what we're doing and, um, I've got to keep elevating the bar. Pat, can you see my screen again, the presentation? Yes, your presentation's back on with the cardio still picture. Good, all right. So the other question is, so how do we grow the game? I'm back to the fitness center again with the big rackets. But here's a very simple question I don't see gets asked enough of, is have you played? Have you tried tennis? And just that opener, again, that's, how you create an opening because that question is powerful because if you said have you played then you can ask more questions well when, when did you play did was it in high school uh was it did, and i played high school tennis back in the day oh i tried it and it was a crappy experience well now i can sell them on a brand new experience of playing tennis at genesis in our play tennis fast program so again, the word power is part of the how. Again, we try to do things front, stage, center. So if it's something, I'm using cardio tennis here, but it's, we do the same thing for 10 and under tennis. We do the same thing for when we have major events. We do the same thing when we're trying to highlight something that we're really trying to promote. We make it front and center. It needs to be a big stage. Our coaches have to know that this is a big stage they're on, okay? So I'm gonna share, you know, our events, the events, how we do the events, they're themed, um, they're, um, they're, they're fun, they're engaging because not only are we playing tennis, but we're getting dressed up. Yes, we're adults, but we, like to act like kids. And um, how we do that is we involve our entire team. How we do that is we sell the fun and the fact that you get to escape from your normal day. Um, how we've made cardio tennis. Every uh, program has different features that make it better. Like I've heard people run cardio tennis without heart rate monitors. I've also heard people run cardio tennis and they weren't very successful 
because they didn't use heart rate monitors. We believe the heart rate monitor elevates the program and that's how we sell it out. That's how we make it special. That's how we make it tellable. And how we use that screen is we just don't say go over there and check it out and see how many calories you burn. How we do it is we engage everybody. How was this workout compared to your last workout? Who burned the most calories today? Or who, who bettered their percentage over their best time before? So we use that as a tool to award, reward, and acknowledge, okay? Um, you know, we say triples, bubble makers, and mixers. And the reason we say that is, you know, we want it to be fun. We want it to be special. Um, this is a crappy slide because it doesn't really capture the energy of that. But again, it's, it's how we theme it, you know, triples, bubbles, makers, and mixers. Ah, so good. And we put videos out on Facebook to help with the promotions. And our, and our team is around in the lobbies promoting our, our events like that. So it's not like just grab a flyer and sign up. It's how we sell that and how we make that special. Um, again, you want to make poster childs. You want to you want to make your team special and stick out. I showed earlier me being silverized. You know, you gotta you gotta make sure your team sticks out and they represent what you're doing. And everybody, if if it's going to be successful at your club, it's key that everybody participates in it and um, represents it and supports it, okay? It's like today, I don't like wearing a mask around at work, but I wear the mask around at work because I need to be a role model. I need to make sure that if we're saying we need to provide a safe environment, I need to um, embody that. And I think that's important for all of us as, as pros, as tennis professionals. We have to embody whatever we're trying to sell and make it special. You know, again, the picture in that video, you gotta go big or go home. You gotta make sure things resonate. So the next time when people see that we're putting on an event, they remember the 170 people that came out for uh, Get Fit Wichita. Here's an interesting one. So let's, the what is, let's bring out the red carpet. Well, that was great until the players and my ball runners didn't use the red carpet. They walked around it and it, they didn't understand that it was there to use. The how of that was to make people, to make in this case, these tennis professionals feel special at the awards ceremony. And this is for our, you know, this is for doubles. And so we'd walk them down with flowers and we'd make them feel special. Could you do that um, for your league winners? Could you roll out the red carpet for somebody who wins out their first match? How do you do that? So we had the red carpet. So how do you make your club accountant, the person who's always hassling people for money, how do you de sensitize her that she's not a mean person. Well, you put her in a tuxedo, you have her at the door, greeting our members and making them feel special. So the idea again is um, how we did that. Um, this helped make her job a lot easier. And it also personalized her that she wasn't just that bookkeeper always hounding you for your missed payments. So that was part of the how. When it comes to making things special, whether it's costumes or in this case, we had a, how we promoted our events, we had a mascot. And the reason we had a mascot is because the mascot went to parades, the mascot went to the schools, the mascot was a community icon. My goal for Genesis someday I've been there five years. I'll know I'm doing a great job is when I have 13 mascots at the 13 tennis clubs that Genesis has amongst their 55. 
I believe it's a great tool. It's again, another fun way, but you gotta make sure they know how to use the mascot. And so we train the mascot. What are the things you do? You got these big white hands. How do you make people feel special? So the mascot actually had a, um, a role sheet and how to be, in this case, the mascot's name was Tennis the Menace, okay? How do you connect with kids? How do you make it special? How do you bring tennis professionals into the community as role models, as celebrities, as sports figures? Well, how you do that is you contact your local schools and you ask, all schools have reading programs. So you have your pros, go to the schools and they read. One of the things that I was involved with was every year on Dr. Seuss's birthday, I had two teachers that would invite me in and I got to read Dr. Seuss for a couple hours a day. And I'll tell you what, if there isn't anything that can soften your heart or just make you feel great in a day is reading some crazy Dr. Seuss stories to kids. He personalized it. And those kids um, remember that. In fact, what's real cool when I went into those classes, how many of those kids said, hey, I know you, you're Coach Woody. So again, it's, it's, it's the how of creating community and building up um, more players and people to try our game. Now this is, this is crazy. So this is during COVID. This is one of our tennis pros. In fact, I kind of brainwashed him into thinking, again, this idea of how, but he told me what he wanted to do was offer a pickup curbside service during COVID to get people's rackets strung. Well, I bought him a unicorn off outfit and I said, you know what'd be cool, Tiago, is if you dressed up in a, in a unicorn outfit and you're outside curbside and you gave them their rackets or you picked up their rackets. So now he went, you know, one cupcake higher and added even some more to it. And he had it, he added uh, a little gift bag to it. So again, the whole idea was the, the how. All we had to do was collect rackets, who cares? But by the way, what this guy is doing at our club is setting amazing records. And I believe it's not on what he's doing, it's how he's doing it. So he's getting dressed up. There he and I are on the top left. This was a, um, I don't know if that's 70s or 80s, but we had a themed uh, triples event. We got dressed up. So again, he dresses up, he does different things. He's super W, he's a little elf. He's the Hawaiian guy. He's the astronaut. Our members love him. And it's how he does it. And it's how he makes this, how he makes that experience. In fact, because of this experience, I believe in the experience he's providing, next week, we, we're running what's called a design your own adult camp week. And what we do, it's out of the norm of the normal programming, we're offering 20 classes that adults can do during the week that creates their own adult camp, okay? And we've done this, uh, this is probably our fifth or sixth time at this club. I brought it to the club three years ago. Um, so we do it two or three times. I think we should do it more because of its success. Next week during COVID, all this stuff, 300 adults have signed up for this program. And not 300 um, unique, it probably is around 100 unique, but they've signed up for 300 spots. So this program is gonna bring in close to six grand of additional revenue, more revenue to the coaches, and it's not what we did, it's how he's created this culture and the, the members trust him, they love him, they know it's gonna be an experience. On his email he sent out to him, it says, hey kids, look who's going to camp. It's mom and dad. And that's, that was the catchy line that he sent out in the email. 
So again, it came back to the how. Here's the what. Well, we're gonna provide tennis to the kids, right? We put them in lines and we're animated and we're fun and I'm, you know, again, this is an example of what? It's just, it's a plain vanilla cone or vanilla cupcake. But it's different when we spread the kids out and they get to experience tennis one-on-one -on -one and they get the, this is how we grow the game of tennis. This is a what? This is a how. And this is how we get more kids into our sport. And when your coach dresses up like that to go out on the court and greet the kids, you got an amazing how. So, oops, you know, again, another how. Again, big, spread everybody out, make it special. Tie in a movie. This was 300 kids that came out to a movie in tennis because we wanted to provide an atmosphere um, that got more kids in the community out. So we tied in two things. Again, a little bit of a how. How you um, make your courts very special. These courts were about ready to be renovated. They're gonna be ground up. So I decided I went to um, Lowe's and I asked them for all the return crazy colored paint they had kind of mixed the sand in there. The court was actually a little slick, but it made it really fun to play on. And we painted the courts. That's a how. My mom said, because she thought I, I just played tennis as my profession, she said, and she's right next to me to, the, to my right. Um, she said, I want to do a camp. I said, well, great, Ma. What are we going to call the camp? She goes, what's well, for all my old friends? I said, well, fine, we're gonna call it the Grand Slam. And then we thought about it more. It ought to be the Graham Slam Camp. So on their shirts, we made a shirt, pink, of course, and it was a Graham Slam Camp. And we created a, a great package for these ladies to come out. And it was, again, back to the idea of creating a camp experience. They loved it. They drank every night and they played lots of tennis. Again, back to the pitchers, creating community is, again, this was, I didn't realize in my first part of my career for 23 years, I worked in a community that had only 40,000 people. And what I didn't know was that I had way too many courts. We had 16 outdoor courts, 16 indoor courts, in a town of 40,000. And I guess I was naive. And during that time, I didn't realize that what I was doing was different to create more people playing tennis and tying in the community. And it's the same formula I've used at Genesis to create community, to get what was siloed tennis happening at our clubs, and to create a community. So again, a pitcher and and at the time, uh, a little more than 10 years ago, Midland won best tennis town. And a lot of that was how we did it, not what we did, but how we did it. And again, if you're gonna kick off a celebration or you're gonna celebrate something, why not do it with a toast of tennis and have a bunch of foam balls, everybody serves at a time. This is close to 200 people all serving at one time christening the tennis courts. So here, here's, here's the how. How do, how do you do the how better? And this is, a, this is a terrible place to be because in order to do the how better, you have to spend more time. You have to brainstorm, debrief, constantly asking, how do we add more sprinkles to the cupcake? You have to find uh, within your staff, how do you one up each other? So how does today's lesson beat the next lesson on how we do it? Partner up, you team up, you make it a game, make it a contest. You have to get out of your comfort zone. 
And I think the first time Tiago, the guy in the unicorn outfit, got out of his comfort zone, he found a new voice. He was a little bit quiet. Maybe he was a little more, um, um, he wasn't a, necessarily a charismatic guy. He was a little more, I'm going to call him uh, more introverted, but he's become, when he's on his stage, he is charismatic and he's having a blast. And it's because he took the first step out of the comfort zone. You have to be different and you have to understand and go after your why. So for me, my why is that everybody feels success that's my mantra, and that's part of my why. And my operative words are feel success. So everything we do, we want people to feel um, happy. They want to feel better. They want to feel like they did something um, special and neat and something they couldn't do. So that's how you create the how. So what's the cost? What's the cost of improving your how? Well, the costs are, it could take you time. You could spend some resources on your how. You might fail. I don't think you fail. I don't think you ever fail, actually. I think you just reset and you do it a little differently. Um, eh. Maybe your ego gets a little, maybe it's, it's out of your comfort zone, so it's just really hard to do. And the other, I, I think I said it was the time. You know, you, you spend time doing this and you're not really sure it's gonna work, but I guarantee this is that when you spend time in that space in the how, and how do I keep improving it and adding little features, and hopefully today's presentation gave you some of those tools, um, I think you'll find that um, new and great things happen, okay? The cost of not doing it is boredom. I think people get bored with the same old. I don't think they get as engaged. I don't think staff gets engaged. So the contra that is, what is the reward? And I believe the award is, it's celebration, it's excitement, it makes our job a party, it makes it like going down the whitewater rafting trip, it's exhilarating. And when we do that, we're on our stage, we're on this Broadway stage, we're on a place where we can be um, the best we can be. I believe it's the, it's, I look at tennis beyond just the tennis part, and I'm a big fan of technique. I'm a big fan of, 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 of great lesson plans, but I believe it's how we do it that makes us a success. So with that, I'm gonna um, leave it open to some questions here. And actually, I'm gonna go back to the Mentimeter and Mike, while you're doing that, I'm going to mention yep. one thing. First off, for everybody that's never been able to see an experience, I'm going to call it Mike, in a live setting, I feel sorry for you stuck in your cubicle uh, <laughs> because Mike is as energetic and passionate of a presenter as I have ever seen. He is just really a fun presenter, and I'm sure this is what you're, what you're as you're showing us today, what your clubs are like. Um, I do have one quick question for you is you showed us uh, some of the really cool things you've done. And of course, big groups and a lot of closeness. So how have you been able to adapt this uh, recently to keep the fun and excitement, but obviously under the safer conditions? Sure. Um, more social distancing. I mean, we're on a, um, we're on a 60 foot court um, and we talk about social distancing. So you can imagine we have, well, Genesis has 55 clubs. Okay, we have 55 clubs. Over 100,000 people check into our clubs weekly. Okay, so if I looked at the amount of incidences of people bringing actually COVID into our clubs. Okay, so let's say 
in 10 weeks, there's been over a million check-ins, okay? We've had 0.002% of COVID being reported into our clubs and we've had no, we've had no outbreaks. So social distancing, um, lots of hand sanitizer, masks when you come in and um, having your mask on if you're in a, again, a tight space, but you know, masks don't have to be worn on the tennis court because it's 6,000 square feet. So um, we've taken the side to follow the CDC guidelines and we've had nothing but success. And the, and the incidences again that came in were ones that really, they, they weren't even our fault, but because we had all this in place, we didn't have any, um, you know, we didn't have any issues with it, so. Okay, good, thanks. All right, sorry, uh, my screen share. Let me see here, VMware. Ugh. I don't know why it's not doing it this time. Um, let me see if I, enlarge this a little bit and then come back to it. Sorry, everyone. Any other questions there? If you, if you have any questions, Phil. Um, Maybe you can type them into the chat. Yep, I'll tie them into the, the chat questions. and I'm gonna see if I can get this. Mike? Yes. Yeah, this is Kevin. How do you know that you've done your how better? Um, this is where I'd like to ask that question back to the room. But I think you, you know you get the how when you're, um, your classes are filling up. In cases like Tiago, 300 people are showing up. Um, you're excited when you're going into work. Uh, the members are talking about you. They're writing you note cards. They're sharing um, that, um, you know, they love your lessons and things like that. So, so for me, I believe it's, you, you know it cause you, you see it from them. Um, so that's, that's how I've evaluated it. And um, I think it's, I, I also evaluate it by the constant growth, the retention, um, just, you know, most, I just find there's less of a retention problem because they're just having a good time. It's a party. I think I've always gone with the idea that people do things because it's not really about the forehands and backhands. It's about um, being with others and how we created that and how we made it special. Um, one of the things we did of our how was we did Zoom meetings with our members. And we also did, of course, Zoom meetings with our staff a long way. And that was that was important to then just not cut ties. It was, you know, we, we've established something, so we want to keep that going. Fantastic, other, thank Other you. questions, I'm not going to be able to share my screen. I'm not sure what happened. So if there's, if somebody wants to cut in and just ask a question they can or, or filter it through. I'll share one, you guys can all see me. Uh, I'll brag about my wife. So my wife, is a massage therapist. All she does is, and I guess this, um, this will answer that question again of how do you know if you're doing it or, or not. So my, mom, my mom, mom, don't tell her that, my wife is a massage therapist. She gives good massages. But I don't believe it's the what of how she does the massage, it's the extra things. So for example, the first time you see my wife, she gives you a little care kit to um, to have, and so it has her it has her card and it has some salts in it. This cost her maybe five or six bucks, but the time she puts it in and the love to it, um, that her massage people come back. So it's you know it's it's a bag full of goodies after their first massage. Now, how does she know that her how is paying off? Well, she's been voted two years in a row best massage therapist in her town where she's only been there for less than four years. So I think you start to, evidence starts to show itself. Other, any other questions?
nothing else yet. We have a, a little bit of a well, quiet bunch. We, we did show somebody that uh, said they had a client that played tennis and found out they had been positive, but everybody else was clean. So that was good. I'm not hearing. Mike, I have another. Oh, yes, sorry, go ahead. No, go. Go, Kevin. Uh, well, I mean, how, what do you say to people who are a little nervous about, I mean, you obviously take some risk when you are attempting new things. If you, you know, think uh, an attempt may not work out. I mean, how, what would you, how would you counsel people, you know, in working through that, that if, you know, you try something and it doesn't work out, um, just how to view that process. Yeah. So the way I look at it is I go, what, you know, we're teachers and coaches and every day we're asking people to step out of their comfort zone. And so if we take the idea that a coach is a role model, that a coach is, um, um, you know, that's, that is almost part of our duty. And maybe you have to start at it slow. Yeah, what I showed you was really just a continual year after year, year after year, trying to just one up myself and kind of better myself a little bit better. And um, yeah, I think it's a it's a challenge. But I think when you, I, I guess my thing would be is, we we first started out today that we're continual learners and. If we want to get better, we got to try different things. And, and I get that we got to get the technical things doing. Uh, you know, we got to get those pieces. But in, in, in the business that I believe we're in, is we got to continue to grow our game. We got to continue to expose people. And there's so many forces and challenges. So if it's just tennis, I don't think it's enough. I think it's got to be. Um, I think it's got to be a platform where they experience the social piece, the fun piece, the extras. One of the things, if, if um, and this would be another one of those extra pieces, if you all want to take my email address, it's, it's woody at genesishealthclubs.com. One of the things um, that I will share back with you, I'll share with you the mentee, but I'll also share with you um, some handouts we give people after the lessons, but I'll also share with you what I call, um, it's the art of abundance. And it'll be a good thought starter um, to the little extra things you can do. Like I'll give you an example of an extra. I wanted to award people for their great job on the court. Well, it started out with the kids and we gave them little stars on their rackets or on their shoes. So I said to my staff, let's take this to the adult world and let's, let's today give out stars for great shots, special accomplishments. And it was amazing for the next couple of weeks, people were talking about that, they wanted more stars, they wanted to match Susie's stars, and we did those as a presentation. So it doesn't have to be something that's ultra embarrassing. I think it just has to be something that's really about the other person. And I believe when we do that, that's when you get um, you know, the kind of results and the things you wanna happen. You wanna grow tennis? You gotta keep upping your how. You wanna make more money? Um, you, you keep upping your how. Ex another example, um, on, this, on my signature line of my emails, I add, instead of just my name, I add the word smashingly. It's my brand. It's part of, you know, I have some fun with that. Um, on my voicemail of my phone, I say, leave a tennis tip or a tennis highlight. And so, I forget sometimes that half the people that call me aren't tennis players, but it's kind of fun to hear their tennis tips or their accomplishments. So, you know, I'm always thinking, how do I create more engagement and how do I create more fun? So fantastic. So with that, I'm going to leave everybody with the challenge is um, see if you can get out of your box, keep asking the question and Maybe ask if you're not getting the results you want. It might not be what you're doing. It just might be how you're mixing the ingredients. Because 
there's always another you that can meet that goal, that objective, and that other you will be that person who makes fireworks and rides in on unicorns and uh, um, follows the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. So with that, thank you all. And uh, let's all grow tennis. And uh, um, I think if we continue to, to do those things and working hard, all it's going to do is shoot us out of this challenge we're in right now. All it, it's, a, it's a huge opportunity for us. So go get it. Mike Woody out. And I endorse this message. All right. Thanks, Mike. That was terrific. Everyone, we will take five minutes before we begin our uh, final presentation.